Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today. Assumptions with the mob. Now remember my perspective. I'm not a made man. I was never a made man. I was a pretty big earner and I made a lot of money for a lot of people. That's called a mob associate. Now remember, I dealt with some pretty big hitters because I made a lot of money for people. It's all about making money. And when you're consistently making money, people notice that too. Do they actually discuss around a table like meeting style? How you see in the movies or does important stuff just get passed along between members? Great question. First of all, I can tell you how it was with me. I'm not sitting at a table with all a bunch of made men and me's. I did play gin with a captain and he liked my company and we'd sit around a table every Friday and play gin and there was another made guy and then a couple associates we'd play with and and we'd play gin all day long and little things would be said at that. I mean, not to me. But you'd see people come up and whisper in his ear, or he'll get up, wait, and we have to wait, and he goes and does something in the back or wherever he does it. So there are meetings that, you know, I guess you could call it around the table. Also, we went to dinner every Friday night at a place called La Palina's. Listen, it was like the old movies. We'd drive the cars on the sidewalk. We had a round table right near the exit there. We would sit there and, uh, the things were discussed there, and a lot of money stuff was discussed there. Uh, especially like when when I had an issue with something, I would make sure, you know, I could ask somebody there. It was, but no, none of our business was put out there. In fact, not everybody knew everything about everybody's business. It's not done like that. I guess it's a need to know need to know basis. I didn't tell certain people what I was doing. Most of them kind of knew or had a good idea about it, but. Nobody knew exactly what I was doing. Nobody. And only a very few people. And vice versa. But that's the kind of way they did the sit-downs around the table, if you'd like to know that. So, I wouldn't say there's like a meeting every, you know, like a, a, a CEO's meeting every Friday. That's, none of that's going to happen. That's, that's really informal. People make a lot of money working for the mob, even as someone at the entry level. You know, that's assumption that's false. I made more money than made people. Uh, a lot of made people. I made more money. Now, they're supposed to be smart enough to understand the hustles. You know, you had some guys that were just brutal. There were tough guys. There were shooters, if you want to call it that. Or, you know, street guys would break your fucking legs and extortion, that kind of stuff. And then you had guys who, who figured out scams or figured out robberies. And, 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 you know, I love this assumption. Oh, they didn't do drugs or they didn't, they didn't know about drugs. Listen to me, I could tell you in my ear they knew about it. Whether they said a word about it, not, not, never that. Because if we got caught doing what we were doing, I think we would have been all whacked. But they got to know. We're, we're giving them envelopes full of money. Come on, they, they're not idiots, you know. So, no, I don't say they all make money. And uh, that is evident in some of the guys that you'll see them trying to, you know, nickel and dime you for some bullshit you know i mean you look back at that today and you say man what a cheap motherfucker now there were some that were cheap and you'd never see him driving around in a great car and all that kind of stuff because the fucking guys were very smart they didn't want the 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 uh the spotlight on them. you know what people don't understand is the real mobsters came from nothing and they hustled and they, they, they were smart with their money and they made bigger moves and they got smart about things. But they, were, they didn't come from a silver spoon in their mouth. They were all hustlers. And uh, that, that was the key. And I think that's a problem today, I think, actually. Constant fear, constant worry. You'll do something wrong and piss the wrong people off. Respect, discipline, and rules. Uh, you know, most of that's true. Uh, you know, you never wanted to piss the wrong people off. But you also wanted to show you had balls that you weren't scared to do shit. Uh, and I don't mean just do shit to do shit. I was a little fucking crazy back in the days. I really was, and I'm not proud of that. And I don't know if my mental illness was fixed, but uh, I had no fear. I had no fear, and that's a bad thing. You need to fear things, uh, and I had no fear. But you know, yes, you better respect the people around you, and you respect everybody. Now, every bar and every club and everybody had idiots and, you know, you fuck with people and I talk about that all the time. Uh, but, you know, we respected each other, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, I was at, at, at places where, you know, you couldn't get fucked with, literally, even us, even associates, you know, you're with the right people, they ain't fucking with you. And, uh, and that's a good thing, I think. So there's respect, there is discipline. The rules were the rules, you know. You know, it was funny, we had a rule in front of our place 
There were literally parking meters. Nobody could park in those spots. Only Dominic could park there. And it was funny. Dominic and Willie had their own spots. No matter what, they came in and had their own spots. It's just the way it was, you know, even in the neighborhood. The rules and, and uh, discipline. I've never seen a friend of mine or somebody get killed over something like that. I mean, I know of people who, who were never seen again and all that. But uh, no, I don't know of anybody that like, just cause they said something bad to the wrong person. But you wouldn't do that. I mean, you'd be an idiot to do that. Who would do that? Not me. Next question. As long as you're in the mob and in good standing with them, do they protect your family? You know, when you say protect, that, 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 I mean, nobody messes with another person's family. I mean, that was like a kind of unwritten rule. No, everybody knew that. Nobody like went out to, you know, no one, no one. You know, you didn't want to date somebody's daughter if they were connected because you were worried, man, that guy could just not like you for something. How do you like the girl to go home and say, he touched me wrong? You know, you're dead. They will kill you for that. It's a little different than you're doing that to the guy down the corner's kid. He can get mad, you can have a fist fight, call the cops. They don't call the cops in those things, you know, and you didn't want that to happen. I didn't want that to happen. But when you say protect your family, uh, families were a mess, so you didn't have to get protections per se. Uh, I could tell you this, they don't take care of your family when you're in prison. Uh, at least I've never seen it happen to anybody. Now, did I see guys get together and ask for a donation, we're gonna send something in? Yes. Did guys give my son money when he rode up and down the block? Yes. Little things like that, but nobody came with an envelope of cash. And I shut my mouth, but it's, it wasn't about that. I didn't expect anything. And I knew what to do when it happened. So I, I wasn't in the fantasy world of, oh, they're going to just, you know, give your family a thousand a week to live or whatever. No, it didn't work like that. At least I don't think it worked like that. And I never heard of it working like that. I've heard of guys in the joint when I was in them, made guys and motherfuckers. I, I got so much money on the street, but I can't touch it. And when I say money on the street, I mean bookmaking money or loan shark money. A guy puts money on the street at three points. Now, I used to do that. Now, I can get money from the guys in New York at one point, and I can put it on the street at three points. When I, when I went to prison, I had a lot of money on the street. I was lost. Nobody went and collected that for me and gave me that money. So, and I didn't want to know, because you don't want to get in another conspiracy. You don't want to get wrapped up in another whole fucking thing. You just don't want to do it. Once you're in there, you're done. It's kind of like, you know, a big shoulder, a big weight is lifted off your shoulder. That's how that is. So, no, that's, uh, protect your family is like a weird thing. You didn't need that. As an associate, what's the generally accepted percentage of any given score you have to kick up? And what protection perks do you get? Great question. I used to always give 25%. So if I, I made 100 grand, 25 was going into an envelope, it's going up to my people. Uh, now, they didn't know the exact amount of money I made on that score, but I never fucked them. Why would you want somebody to, you know, maybe your, your boss uh, is talking with another guy at another event or something, say, yeah, you know, that Larry kid, he's doing real good. That kid comes with the jewels, he's doing real good. Man, I just gave him, a, you know, I just gave him 400K in a bag, you know? And now I only gave him 20 grand, you know? Now he's thinking, what the fuck is going on? Now there was no set percentage. You set your percentage. They're happy with that percent. Nobody sits and says, give me more. How much did you make? I never, they never even asked me how much I made. I just gave them an envelope. I used to get the, hey kid, be careful, be careful. You're doing good, be careful kid. And that was it. And uh, I, I used to give them diamonds too. It was funny, I used to you know, bring a couple of loose stones. Oh, be careful, that looks good. And they take a diamond or some shit. And it's worth a lot of money. But that's the way that worked uh, as far as giving up. Now, what protection did you get? Other families knew that I was associated with them, with the Gambinos. This way, it was very important because, listen, do you think I want them, somebody here in Haiti, that there's a guy, Larry, over there, he, he's whacking fucking jewelry stores, he's making a lot of money. What do you think they're gonna do? They go, oh no, he's, he's independent, he, he does what he wants. Oh really? Somebody's gonna snatch you up and they're gonna put you in fucking a chair, tried down and have an iron over you and they're gonna get what they want from me. I'm not fucking some tough guy, oh, you'll never get my money. Bullshit, if you got me in a chair, you get what you fucking want. Now, don't let me get out of that chair. But they're gonna try to get the money out of me. They're gonna try to figure or rob me or make my life difficult. When they know you're associated with a specific family, they can't do that. Now, why would our family want that to happen when people are making money up the road, you know? 
so that doesn't happen like that. That's a really important thing to understand. You, you needed it back, especially in my day. And then you had your rules too. You couldn't rob certain areas because they're protected by somebody and stuff of that nature. So, you know, you, you, you stay in your lane, so to speak. But yes, that's a great question, and that, that's how that answered. What I assume is that Godfather is how they want to be seen, and Goodfellas is seen as how they really are. Uh, you know what? I think you're right. What people don't understand about The Godfather and all these fucking movies, and why I look back down and, and say, come on, get real, if you're really smart. They say, oh, look how they came over here and they, they did the right thing. What did they do? They extorted from their own people. They gave them loans that they couldn't repay, you know, at exorbitant interest rates, and they're trying to help their own community. No, they weren't great guys. They were ruled with violence, and they ruled, and they were smart, and they, and they if you didn't fucking toe the line, and, and they only messed with their own communities at first. It wasn't like they were going out into other communities and doing all this stuff. They were going into their own communities. You know, that's why, you know, the old, uh, oh, the olive oil company, and he does, and he does the good thing for the lady and stuff. Yeah, but he's also shaking down everybody in the neighborhood, and they're paying them rent for their food, their food uh, cart and everything else. It's not like they're just doing good business and they're nice people. So that that's a big fantasy about the mob. As far as being seen like casino, more so, you know, robbing, fucking stealing, figuring out fucking shit, you know, skims, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely, like casino and Goodfellas, figuring out a robbery, the Lutens or whatever, hanging out, being stupid, buying shit. Totally like that. That's more like the mob than the Godfather. No question. I assume the boss, Kills anyone that offends him. Is that true? You know, I don't know it to be true, but I don't know people who just offend the boss. Didn't happen. I don't. I, I never seen someone go up to the boss and say, you fucking piece of shit, or fuck you, you're wrong. Never ever in my life did I ever hear anybody raise their voice in front of the boss. How's that? My boss is a captain. I don't mean the boss, boss. I seen him raise his voice. I seen him fucking even crazy little motherfucker. But yes, again, I haven't seen it, so I don't know if he just kills anyone who offends him. Uh, you know, the murders aren't as much as people think either. Murders are business decision. Uh, and it was like that. I, I didn't see it like that. Uh, and I never also seen anybody just do something stupid in front of the boss or, or def definitely disrespect the boss. Even the maid guy, I didn't see people do that. I seen him get shot. No, I didn't see anybody just offend him like that. So I'm not sure about that. Assuming you know someone who knows someone that can or has at one time disposed of a human remains. Uh, I'm going to leave that one for uh, a non-answer. Just leave that one alone. Uh, I knew a lot of bad people, period. I knew people that I didn't know what they did until later in life. So, and, and I was around a lot of people that were, were very, very tough, bad people. It is what it is, good, bad, or indifferent. That's never, never bothered me. I think uh, you always worried, in my mind, in, in that life was how you did stuff. See, I got lucky in, in its own way. I left New York uh, in 87, and I went to Florida. Now, I used to come back and forth from Florida to New York to do business, but I never had to uh, uh, stay around that bubble every minute of every day. I was up here, I was up here for weeks, sometimes three days, five days, gone, in and out, in and out, and uh, I liked it that way. I kind of ran my own thing down there, with protection, of course even though Florida's open and all that. And I, I was a cowboy down there, that's for sure. So I didn't have to deal with that everyday bullshit. And, uh, but I knew a lot of bad people. So on that question, I just want to leave it at that. I, I knew a lot of bad people. Next question, Dominic. Assume you have both a nice Italian suit and an ugly trash suit in your closet. You know, you know, in my day, that was really funny. They were wearing those old sweatsuits. We used to call them sweatsuits, track suits. You know, they'd have the stripe down and they did the pants. And, and, I, and it was mainly because we were fat fucks on most of them. And then they came, there was no belts. And, but yes, I remember them so well. And yes, I had them. And it was amazing. You know, you'd have the sneakers and the track suit and the whole works. And, and, and it's funny. And, you know, we used to buy them hot. We used to get them hot. 
guys would steal truckloads of them, like, you know, steal a clothing store, and they'd be in the trunk, and they'd come to the bar, and we'd get, you know, who, what size are you? you get these tracksuits all over the place. Uh, yes, I had a suit. Back then, I had what they call a leisure suit. Look it up, a leisure suit with the long lapel and the thing. Yeah, you'll, you'll laugh about it, that's for sure. It, it's kind of funny, you know, you're right. Not Italian suits, the leisure suits. And we, we used to go to a, uh, a specific haberdashery or uh, clothing, men, uh, men's place down over on Stillwell Avenue for clothes, the, the warehouse, they called it. And we used to go there for clothes and also the track suits and stuff. Most of it's hot. We got so much shit hot, it was unbelievable. It was like, you know, you'd wait for shit. Socks, underwear, everything was hot out of a trunk of a car. The way it was. Is it true that one of the requirements is wearing a fedora, owning a Tommy gun? You know, obviously no hats, this. There were certain rules that guys in the mob, they couldn't have a mustache, you know, made guys or guys that want to be really that way. Uh, I used to have different facial hair because of robberies. Grow it, not grow it, have it, not have it. Uh, I was never, never wore a fedora. Tommy guns, I never saw one. Never even. Uh, that's back in the twenties, thirties. Uh, was Tommy guns, I guess. And I, I seen a lot of mobsters with guns. Always pistols though, and sort of shotguns. I had a sort of shotgun myself. You know, I remember the Bruno. Oh, laddie, laddie, could barely speak English. A zipper, and fucking, he would show me his taped guns. Like it was like a big collection. Fucking crazy motherfucker. But that was not a requirement. Okay, next question, Stephen. I would assume it was a wild lifestyle, but it was probably more stressful than anything. Not knowing who to trust, who might want to harm you. Is that a cop? Is this guy a rat? Will this fella pay up? Etc. Steven, this is the best question so far. Uh, yes, a wild lifestyle. Totally. Uh, you are totally 100% true. I remember one time I was in Brooklyn and uh, I ended up going to meet some people to discuss a deal with, with something on the side with diamonds and something I had. And uh, I met these guys in, in an apartment and it was downstairs. And I had the funniest feeling in the world that I was going to get killed. Uh, there was drugs involved, too. Uh, but I really did. I had the funniest feeling in the world that I was going to get whacked. Uh, so, yes, that's a big thing, what you just said. Uh, yeah, you don't know who is a rat. You, you don't talk to people. You're just supposed to trust your people. Obviously, in my day, it was a little bit better than it is today or even in the late 90s or anything like that. In my day, which is the early 90s, late 80s, it was a little bit different. The pay-up stuff, you never worried about. I mean, one way or the other, you're getting your money or something out of it. Guys are rat. We didn't think of it like that. You had a few. You kind of, you know, we were all cautious, but not like it is today, obviously. Uh, is that guy a cop? You know, I mean, we didn't think like that. There was no Donnie Brasco that I remember that didn't come out until later anyway. And that was in that era. Uh, but that's, I didn't know it. None of us knew it, obviously. Uh, but the harm you is the one I used to worry about. And it was because of the money I was making and the wildness I was. I'm sure people thought, oh man, if we could just take them. And I'm talking regular guys. Fucking without permission, just let's whack him, let's get a, you know, 50 grand he's got on him. I mean, fucking 50 grand is a whack, man. That's a good score. I mean, and not, no one would know that I'm just dead. You know, it's not like that people wouldn't retaliate. It was about them just, you know, getting robbed. So you are worried about that. And you worry about the cops. But it is a wild lifestyle, that's true. Uh, but, you know, so glad I'm out of that lifestyle. I'm so glad that I live the life I do now. Next question. Can you provide advice on retention in gangs? What makes people stick around? And am I sure can be applied across the business? What most important factor in retention apart from financial gains? This is a great question. And let me give you the answer to this question. It's mostly a unity. It's a family. It's a uh, people never had the attention or the mom or dad that gave them not money. People didn't want money. It was you want to be loved, man. And uh, that's a big deal. I don't think it's not. I don't care what it is you want to be loved. And gangs give that love in whatever way you want to call it. So do the mobs or the other people. You know, there's always more to sticking to something than just the money. If it was just the money, it'd, it'd be easy. You'd find out numbers, make them comfortable, and that's it. But no, it's more. It's 
exclusivity. It's being on the in. It's respect where you go. It's people know oh, he's connected with that crew over there. Don't fuck with those guys. When you walked into the diner or when you walked into the candy store to buy something, they knew, oh, you, you come from over there, the stretch over there. Okay. And fucking, they knew that, you know, they, they kind of like gave you your space. I mean, I remember being in a place and they knew where we were and they would jump straight. There would be four people online. They'd go, come here. And they'd take care of you, you know, right there. People look like, who the fuck is he? I get it, but that's just the way it was in, in, in the area. I grew in, and that's not going to change. And then there's loyalty, and then it comes with in a lot of ways. You did something for somebody's family. You're into drugs together. You're into sex together. There's so much shit that goes on people don't know. Next one, assumption. The guys at the very tip top were the smartest and didn't snitch. Uh, that's a fact. Wrong. How about Joe Messina? Joe Messina, a boss, flipped. So, no, that's not the truth. Uh... And, you know, obviously they got there for whatever reasons. They're, they're killers. There's a lot of reasons why someone gets there. Obviously, brains should be it. You know, and I don't know if they're the smartest anymore. You don't ever have to be the smartest. You have to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. In anything, in business, in life. You know, the President of the United States is never the smartest in the room. But he should surround himself with people who give him the best advice and are smart at that topic. So always remember that. They get together often, and there's always one who slices garlic very thin, like in the movies. Uh, I never saw that ever. We bought our shit at Pizza Deli, and we used to get sandwiches in there, and of course, you know, mozzarella and uh, salted mozzarella balls and caught them, get the red peppers or salt on that, forget about it, pepper, oh, to this day I love that, man. Look at me, I'm getting hungry. Uh, I never saw the slice up garlic. Obviously, I did that in prison. I made famous by um, Paul Servino doing that in the movies. Even in prison, I did that. I didn't see it like that. First of all, they didn't live like that. Oh, here comes the wine, here comes the bread. Nah, it wasn't like that. But yeah, guys, slice up garlic, and it's, uh, we did get together often. That's the one thing about your question that is right. So that should end this thing on a pretty good note. My perspective from a guy who is not totally on the inside, but was around that life my whole life. And I mean my whole life, since I was 12 years old. I'm a blessed man to be where I'm at. I enjoy my life now. It's a whole different animal. But I'm glad I can answer some of these questions. Keep them coming. You know I'm going to be answering. Have a great day, everybody. Please make good choices. Don't follow my footsteps. Don't go where I was. Learn from what I'm talking about. Pass on good knowledge and help someone. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe.